Good afternoon. Just a quick one from me, guys. I'm going to drop on here because, believe it or not, there's a lot of us still locked down, nothing to do, questioning our career choices. And we need ear food, we need mind food. So I'm constantly trying to think of um, different things to do. Obviously, I can do my stand up. That's the easy bit. But I thought I'd also jump on quickly to tell you about my book, Son of a Silverback. Now, I published this and there should have been a paperback coming out about now. I'm going to delay that for obvious reasons. Son of a Silverback is not your usual comedian's memoir. In fact, it's more like a biography of my dad, Dave Kane, the alpha male, silverback, ripple-necked, right-wing, shaven-headed, metal-working, lump of Essex steak, Dave Kane, my parent. I tell his story, and that tells my story at the same time. So my dad was born in 2000 and... My dad passed away in 2003, born in 1941. That's the span of the story. And I thought I would come on and read an extract of the book to you, if you're up for it. Um, Nemesis is asking when I'll be doing live shows again. It's a good question. I wish I knew the answer to that. It's been a long while that theatres have been closed and um, what can you do? So I'm just uh, I'm trying to stay busy anyway. This is a story about the satellite dish my dad put in the house and there we go. This is not a stale of rags to riches. I spent most of my childhood feeling like the richest kid in the school. Yes, I had to build my own stuff later on with my bootstrap fibre, lifting myself up but I honestly felt wealthy. We had lots of firsts in my house and one was being the first family to get a satellite dish. No other fucker in the street has got one. It's amazing, Dad. It's a shithole area. No one will get it round here for years. And then Dad would normally trail off into a self-loathing speech about living in Brimsdown, about being a failure. But ultimately, there were some things he was proud of, and the satellite dish was one of them. Years later, during my partying days, Dad would pounce on me in the hallway at 6am. Bloody hell, boy, your eyes are like the satellite dish. Not a satellite dish, the satellite dish. Guess how many channels, boy? Guess how many channels? Ten? Ten? <laughs> Ten in French and the rest in every other language you can think of. All right, what about Hindi? I said, being clever. Don't take the piss, boy. They've got Italian, though. Loads of it. But we only speak English, I thought. And I'm just going to move on. Naturally, he being Dave Kane, we weren't going to get a sky dish stuck to the house like every other mug was being tricked into buying. No, we were getting the real satellite telly. Fuck no, the sky cunts. Rip off shit. But Dave, Mum said, isn't Sky Films and all that on the Sky dishes? Are you going to fork out for that rip off crap every month? No, I'm getting the real deal. The full Monty. The absolute bollocks. I have no idea if the things my dad brought home in the transit were legal or not. It certainly needed a Ford van to transport the bulky shit. This wasn't a discreet dish bolted onto the pebble-dashed wall at the back. This was a van load of black metal from the future. It took two full days to set up our satellite dish on the flat roof at the back of our house. And Dad was so chuffed, he only lost his temper twice. Cunt spanner! Dave! Eventually, sunset on day two. It's done, Julie. Do we need a license for it, Dave? Just don't discuss it with the fuckwits in our road and we'll be okay. It was a dark, it was dark by the time my dad drop kicked his tool bag into the garage. Our new satellite dish 
was the diameter of a hatchback's roof and it was mounted on three stacked paving slabs. Bound cables discharged from its base into a thick anaconda of confusion, winding down through the toilet into the kitchen and terminating in the lounge where they fed a black receiver, which looked like something the Russians had developed to trick Ronald Reagan. The remote was a brick-sized hunk of black plastic with a da Vinci code of grey rubber buttons. The manual was thicker than the edition of Macbeth I was forcing myself through for GCSE English literature. But none of these, none of these was the most gasp-worthy thing. It had an amazing feature that would draw to my house friends, cousins, and eventually even girls, agape in wonder. When you switched on the box and used the remote, you didn't just select one of the hundreds of foreign language channels, oh no. You chose which satellite you wanted to. Watch this boy, said Dad, beaming silky male pride. Say you wanna watch this channel, it's called Ray One. You type 20, he showed me on a key card, it's Italian. That means at night you get birds with their tits out and all sorts. All Italian fanny, top quality. He leered like a butcher selling some knockoff meat. I smiled politely. After all, how was soft porn in that kind of setup useful to me? There was no way I was going to risk a danger wank in the family lounge, not even at 1am. Was it worth the jeopardy of mum's face appearing at the glass of the stairway door with a what are you doing up? Wow, amazing, I said, Italian. Right, fucking right, watch this. He typed 20, nothing happened, just screen fizz. Come on, he shouted, barreling through the house. I ran after him, all the way to the back garden. My face then was the exact face of someone in a movie when they finally realize time travel is real. Our satellite dish, was moving. Slowly and futuristically, the bastard thing was rotating. And that boy is what you call the fucking absolute dog's bollocks. It was the first time I'd heard the phrase, the dog's bollocks. I've used it ever since. That's my book, Son of a Silverback. Get the audio book on audible.co.uk. Get the book book from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks for listening, guys.